Welcome to Answers TV, my name is Jack Duxbury and this is... Andy from Roland, hello. Thank you for being here Andrew. Lovely to be here as always. I was just behind the camera. <laughs> if I'm sweating menopausally, it's because I just am, okay? I'm getting that age, I've had a bad... <laughs> the heating was left on overnight, I haven't felt too well all week, but I made it here up from Dorset because uh, after the first video we did when this mm. came out, the Gaia 2, I promised you Andy was coming in. I was just going to quickly mention just about like the Gaia itself. Okay, like, cool. the, the, the original one was was such a cool thing. Like, um, uh, and I'd say for me, really important because uh, in my job interview for Roland ten years ago, I did a demo on the Gaia and it helped me get the job. So I have to uh, insert say, VT. Say I have to no. say, yeah, <laughs> big thanks to that, which is uh, which is cool. And um, what was ace about the Gaia though, and this is the same kind of spirit, is just like, I always felt it was always about like lifting up musicians, you know, getting access to, to getting into synths, you know, people who'd always spent just time uh, learning on software and they wanted to get into hardware. Uh, the Gaia was a perfect kind of thing for that. And, you know, it was in production for such a long time, so it was uh, really popular with education as well, which is ace. And Gaia 2 is very much in that spirit. It's kind of like, you know, it's, it's very easy to use. It's all about getting hands on, getting stuck in, just grabbing things, figuring out, you know, what they do, manipulating the sound, which is ace. Uh, one of the things, uh, so just to clarify, this is not part of our Zencore range. It's not a Zencore instrument. It has, uh, I can understand why people get confused. It's actually kind of got two sound engines running, uh, running through it. So the main one is the Gaia 2 sound engine, which is like a brand new sound engine. There's loads of different components in that which have not appeared in anything before. There's lots of unique things in the, the oscillators. The filters are brand new design. We've got new effects, new LFOs. Um, but then also we have, because uh, the chip inside is capable of running a couple of different technologies. So we also have like as an expansion point where you can, it has an SH-101 built into it, which is using the analog behavior modeling from our um, uh, lesson Juno X and Jupiter X and stuff. So there is a bit of crossover in that respect for that, but uh, that's one point to clarify really. So it's its own sound engine. Awesome. Did not know that. I stayed yeah. <laughs> really ignorant. Thankfully, uh, Oz made the video at least watchable of me going through the presets. Mm. Uh, but yeah, should, do you want to go for a full deep dive? Yeah, yeah, let's oh, go through it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cool, so yeah, starting with the hardware. So like, yeah, we've got a brand new hardware design. It's an aluminium top panel. So really nice, uh, strong build quality. Lots of really good quality uh, knobs and faders uh, for sculpting your sound. Uh, the keyboard action, right? so it's 37 sort of full-size keys. It's the same action that's in the Juno X, actually. So it's like a big upgrade from the one that was in the original Gaia. So one of the questions, again, is people asking about aftertouch. So no, there is no aftertouch in the keyboard, but hopefully, as you'll see, there are loads of really good um, uh, features for modulation that we've got built into other areas of the synth. So if you've already got a couple of keyboards that have got aftertouch, check this out because you might find some uh, some new fun ways to do things, you know, which you haven't got already. So all good. And um, an OLED display on the screen, which is nice. Mm. And uh, the new motional pad, which is a really great way for sort of adding expression to the sound and modulation, which we'll get in into a second. Come on. Uh, so yeah, the layout of the synth, so I've just pushed initialize to initialize a tone on here. So we've got three oscillators on here. So the top one really is uh, our special one, which is a wavetable oscillator. If you're unfamiliar with wavetable synthesis, so on kind of like normal subtractive uh, synths, uh, you have sort of standard waveforms like sine, square, um, saw, and uh, things like that, which we have here. But uh, wavetable allows you to use like a more sort of complex waveform. 
uh, and use that as the start of the sound. So we have a choice of 63 different wavetables. Covered loads of kind of different tones, and then also you can uh, alter the position of that so you can find a particular point within that waveform and use that as your starter tone. You can get lots of really cool, uh, interesting tones out of that. The other thing that goes along with it, and I suppose bringing up to our, our emotional pad here, is uh, with the uh, wavetable oscillator, is we have control over uh, P mod and S mod, which are phase modulation and S modulation. If we use uh, the phase modulation, um, we can sort of manipulate the phase of the sound sort of in real time. And find lots of interesting points to sort of uh, manipulate the tone. And S modulation or uh, shape modulation allows us again to sort of like distort the signal, but also change the sort of shape of the waveform that it's going through as well. So with the combination of these, you can get some quite interesting tones. And um, as we've, uh, if you see on the screen here, because we have a uh, record uh, section, you can record the movement of what we're playing in. Uh, and you can actually record up to, I think, 13 seconds of, um, uh, of, of information, which is pretty cool. And it picks up your acceleration and speed. So if I draw something in now. Uh. And then hit on. Oh, come on, that's so cool. Yeah, which is awesome. Never seen that. No, no, no. So you can use this as a really great way of uh, sort of just making interesting movement uh, to a sound. That's wild. Yeah. Uh, and it doesn't have to be a loop as well. You can just press it once and it sort of goes oh. through it once, kind of like it's an envelope and then come back, which is pretty cool. That's great. Um, and also you, you can also assign uh, uh, other parameters. So instead of using phase modulation and shape modulation, which are just on the wave table, you can assign different parameters, so cut off resonance, whatever you like, really. Here's a sound that's been made by uh, David Arland on our team. Yeah. He's a good thing, shout out to David. Yeah. Um, an aggressive bass sound. So with the, uh, uh, what he's recorded on here, so. Yeah. Forgive my sloppiness on that. It's like, no, no, uh, it's, it's great. Cool. But uh, yeah, some really cool, like kind of uh, sort of aggressive kind of tones. Just I'm not to... the biggest aficionado, but it seems like a new sound for Roland. Mm. Wave. I don't know if I've ever really gone wave tabley with Roland before. Have no. you done it? Uh, yeah, yeah. So actually, a couple of things. So in uh, in the uh, SH4D, which we looked at earlier yes. on, that's got a wave table oscillator mm -hmm. model in there. And also um, uh, uh, the enzyme expansion that we've done. Yes, that was it. Yeah, that, yeah. Watch that video, actually. Yeah, yeah. that's got some you, like, you, you similar kind of parameters. It's really it's good very, very cool. It, yeah. So, I mean, this is, a, uh, this is more of like a, a pad sound. Um, but again, this is just using very simple sort of modulation, but this is sort of the other end of the spectrum of what we were looking at on there. So. Nice little subtle things that are going on, mm. which is cool. Can that be sent out to control other things? Yeah, 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 yeah. So each of the uh, in the X, Y uh, directions, uh, they can send out MIDI CC. So in fact, most of the controls on the front panel uh, send out MIDI CC. So if you do want to connect it to other gear and use this to drive other functions, you can do. Which Very is really cool. Which is cool. And that's all just with, uh, this is all coming from Oscillator 1 when we're going through the wavetables, right? Uh, yes, yeah. I mean, so some of these patches, sorry, are, are yeah. combining uh, the, um, uh, combining both of them together. Lovely. Let me just. But yeah, you're showing me, I'm, I'm getting the emotional pad now. Mm. I could tell it was a big deal because it was front and center and it felt so good. Yeah, yeah. And sturdy. But I totally missed the point on it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and it's way better than I thought. <laughs> well, let's. Uh, I'll just show one. This is a. Uh... 
because the other thing as well is you as well as drawing in it i mean you can just use it in real time to uh to mm. manipulate what you're doing so this uh this preset is very good for this as well so this is quite hands in a kind of ask i think you know Oz, you have a very good question. Some some patches you're playing, the automation returns to the center of the crosshair, mm -hmm. and sometimes it returns to the bottom left. Or how do you how do you change what's happening as soon as you lift your finger off of the motion? Yeah, that's a very good question. Uh, you can uh, specify actually. So when you go into so let's say um, I've just got a saw wave, and as a default, it's um, set to cut off and resonance. Uh, and as you can see, when I lift my finger off, it's just staying where it is. But if you go to uh, the settings, so shift and then the on and off button, and uh, scroll down, there's a setting called snapback. So if you, uh, if I put it on immediate, it means as soon as I jumps back, but then we have a couple of other patterns like fast or slug, which is really, really slow. So you can do uh, some cool things with that. I mean, the other thing as well, when you've, if we've recorded in uh, motion, so let's just say, like, let's have this, and <laughs> if we go, <laughs> so many, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so uh, um, as it's going round, you could, if you wanted to, set it to be so instead of being on a loop, that it's just uh, if I turn loop off. Um, it'll play it once and then sort of get to the end of it and stop or you could have it so it's synced to the tempo or uh, key triggered as well. Roland should just sell a little one, like almost like... Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just sending out MIDI. Yeah, yeah, like that'd be cool. Girl's bed. Thanks for being my eyes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is using one of the new types of reverb. So this is a modulation reverb, which is a brand new reverb algorithm for it. We've also got a new shimmer reverb in there, which is nice, which is good. I love a bit of shimmer. Mm -hmm. And there's 50 different effects in the MFX section and uh, nine different types of chorus, actually, which are, which are ace. We'll have a look at those as well. It, just, it kind of brings me on to a nice little thing, actually. With um, So although everything is, is really nice and hands-on, easy to use, you just grab controls, um, if, you, uh, if you do want to see a little bit more detail, if you push the dial in on here, you can see uh, sort of the signal flow, but we can use the motional pad as a, a trackpad with a mouse as well. <laughs> so if I want to see a bit more info on Oscillator 1, I can go tap on it and then I can use this to sort of scroll through the page and uh, uh, edit things in a little bit more detail, which is pretty cool. That's cool. I, I love that too. we were talking, reminiscing about the 90s, mm. that's pretty yeah, yeah, 90s. Yeah, yeah. And I remember you don't get the little red thing in the middle of your... Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. Sick. And um, in that same screen, actually, so if I go over to the effects, oh, what? you can actually... Uh, so it defaults to go in MFX into chorus into reverb delay, but you can change actually that. So if you want to swap it, so you know sometimes I know like people like to go reverb into distortion things like that. You can do that on this, which is which is cool. And then another thing as well. So talking about the other two oscillators, let me just initialize this again. So our top one is the wavetable oscillator, which is kind of like the the special one in a way. But underneath it we have two uh, traditional um, uh, virtual analog style waveforms. So let's just turn up uh, oscillator two and we have our traditional shapes. But if I have, you can make really, really massive sounds out of this using very basic kind of things. So this is just a saw wave, one saw wave on its own, altering the position, which is mapped to a control called FAT. So this gives a lot of kind of punch to it. And because everything is really easy to assign and adjust, if we go over to, we have two LFOs on here which you can send to four destinations each. But again, if you want to assign it, is you just hold a sign, grab the control, so oscillator two shape in this case, and it's assigned. And then turn up the depth. Mm. That's just one oscillator going. 
If we, uh, let's bring in another one underneath that, which will make a uh, square. And uh, if we want to make it even bigger, we have like a unison function as well. So I'm just going to hold this note. <laughs> just taste it, you know. So, so you can make absolutely massive sounds, um, or as we looked at before, you know, with some of those pads and stuff. Like it covers a huge amount of ground, really. Oscillator right. land, we can mix those. Mm -hmm. Control very comprehensive LFO section. Mm -hmm. Filters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, the filter's really cool as well. It's, uh, it's got a, a couple of uh, nice little features around it that we'll talk about. Um, so it's a multi-mode filter. So we have uh, different slopes, 12, 18, and 24 decibels that we can go through. It can also be low pass, band pass, and high pass. Uh, what is pretty cool about this though is, uh, and this is a, as a new feature for Gaia 2, which is not in any of our other products, um, is uh, not only filter drive, but also makeup sensitivity to it. So yeah, filter drive allows us to sort of, um, uh, kind of uh, drive the signal that's going through the filter. So if I've got a sine wave on the screen, you can see the shape of it here, because it's the sort of purest tone. And as I adjust the drive, you'll see it sort of square off, kind of like because the waveform has been distorted. So it's becoming more rounded, kind of like a square wave almost in a way. Um, but what we also have with this is a, 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 a control called um, drive makeup sensitivity, which is a shift function on here. And what this does is kind of like it compensates for sort of the volume adjustment of it but it's, it's really, it's adjusting the headroom of the signal. So the way that I'd explain this, if you imagine sound going into um, a filter, kind of being like water going through a pipe. So when we have uh, the drive function, that's like increasing the amount of water that we're trying to force through the pipe. But the makeup sensitivity, which is like our headroom, it's sort of changing the width that the pipe is. So we can still, so basically we can put in a, a, a higher harmonic uh, signal, but not having it distorted and clipping so much. Right. That makes sense. Yeah. So I've, I've just prepared a couple of examples. So when you when you increase the headroom on it, so uh, that does sort of adjust the volume. So I've made a couple of in, in advance to sort of uh, show the the changes. So this one, um, this is sort of just completely clear. This is uh, with no drive on it. And um, this next one, so I've added. Um, Sort of the same amount of drive that you might sort of find on a Jupiter 8 and adjusted the headroom for it. So, flipping between them. Slightly different. Here's one from sort of an American style synth. Another one. Very subtly different. Um, but usually, when, um, you know, when sort of a company is like having to design a filter, Things like the drive and also the headroom of it is something that you, you know, it's kind of normally fixed. You yeah. sort of have to design it in advance. Uh, and this is, you know, it is kind of a adding sort of subtle kind of textures to it. But the really nice thing about this is you can fine tune the filter to be, uh, to be what you want. You know, if you're not getting exactly what you want out of it and you want to more closely mimic other things, you've got complete control. 60 decibels of uh, headroom and a whole load of drive as well. So 
Very Ooh, nice. Very advanced. Mm, yeah, which is cool. For me. Yeah. <laughs> it's all good. Yeah, big time. Right, I mean, that's the thing is that this is like more of a kind of like, I suppose, advanced sound design thing that somebody might want to do. But if you're the kind of person who really likes to get into, into the detail and uh, have that level of control, it's there. Yeah. Which is pretty sweet. And you say it, yep, all those things. Uh, amp, yep. uh, they look just super nice and simple. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the other thing as well, like, it's quite, I know, I mean, we're obvi obviously, we're very, you know, obvious to see uh, filter and amp envelopes and stuff, but actually, like, even at this kind of, this price level, it's quite rare to find something that's got full amp envelope and filter. Usually they're cut back a little bit. Um, and on obviously on sliders and things. So it's nice mm -hmm. to have that kind of like level of control. And a tone. Tone, I'm yeah, like, which is like uh, kind of like a tilt EQ almost yeah. in a way. So that's really that's nice. That's great. Like, uh, should we get into these effects? Like, so we've we got the new shimmer mm -hmm. and a uh, modulated reverb. Yeah. And 4,000 types of chorus. Yes. <laughs> but that's kind of, that's a dream, right? If you're into Roland, like how many years were people going, oh, Roland chorus? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just dish them all the chorus. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So this, um, so we have a few different types. Uh, one, the in Bank C, it's based on the JX three P chorus, uh, and the others are uh, different types. Let me show you the shimmer reverb. Oh yes, please. So we looked at the modulation reverb on that patch before, but the this uh, shimmer. And for each of the effects, uh, if you, when we go into our, our, our menu on here, we have quick, um, quick controls over here. So things like the amount of time, and we've also got the feedback and level. Nice. But if you do want to get into it, we can adjust the dampening, you can adjust the density, pre-delay, modulation oh, rep, oh my God. the course tune, these I'm a things. bit of a, I bloody loves me some shimmer. Mm. Let's go up to, a, let's give it a nice long tail on there. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. The effects are another level. Mm. I don't, were there even effects in the original one? Uh, there were, yeah. You had sort of, um, there was kind of like a little pad on the right hand side. Yeah. Uh, a bit of crusher, probably had a bit crusher. Yeah, a bit yeah. crusher on there, mm. and uh, a few others. But there, there wasn't a huge amount of control. I think if you had, you had maybe two, maybe three controls yeah. on it, but not not the same kind of level that you've got in here. So here's uh, a patch I've made where I've just used the wavetable oscillator to get this kind of uh, fake kind of organ sound, and using the LFO to sort of uh, pitch it a little bit out of tune. And you can probably hear I've got this phonograph effect on it as well, which is kind of like cool. <laughs> quite cool is um, is on the pitch bend so we can I'm going to turn down the noise on the phonograph for a second but we can uh, as well as having sort of traditional kind of pitch bend effects menu in here um, you can set it to be a normal uh, pitch bend but I've got it set on here this uh, CNL mode and uh, this takes sort of the last note that you play and then just pitches that one so Or, or down. Mate. So in this one, so I've spec the range up to be two, and then the, the down range to be uh, 17. I don't know why I did 17, but so we'll go up. You know, so there's some quite cool effects that you can do with that. Oh, which is you pretty can do sweet. like uh, faux, faux pedal steel yeah, and things like that. Totally. Yeah, 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 yeah. Really? Which is really sweet. This is, uh, are these in your flagship? Uh, no, Since. that isn't. That's that's sort of a, a new feature that's unique on this. Very Other cool, cool little things, because I'm still discovering nice little fun stuff mm -hmm. about it, is <clears throat> if we use one of the uh, noise oscillators, again, let's go into uh, the menu for this. So you can choose um, the type of... Uh, type of noise that we've got so it can with sorry using the shape dial we can go from white to pink noise which is cool it's fairly standard but we also have a couple of other things we can go from pink noise into like a faker pour sound ah oh, come on or a uh, stream kind of. that's what we want from Roland 
That's exactly. what it, that's so Japanese, man. Yeah, yeah. Do you know in a cool way, right? That's just wild. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's so fun. Vinyl noise. It's kind of like more of an engine tone. But again, I mean, these are like little, just subtle textures that when you're blending together your sort of three oscillators, um, yeah, you can just use Can you get a lot of people things. making sound packs for this? Totally, yeah, yeah. Everything is sort of uh, in there. So, I mean, if you want to make sort of traditional sort of fake analog brass kind of things, uh, you can do those kind of sounds, but then you can also blend in um, uh, wavetable stuff as well. loads of ground you can kind of cover really it's, it's awesome cool. uh, the oscilloscope mm. i imagine if i said back on the original guy if i went oh it would have an oscilloscope yeah yeah i wouldn't have believed you no no it's good well i mean yeah yeah uh let's go into this world okay if yeah, that's yeah. all right because oh, i'll yeah, never yeah. get into this world yeah yeah so um so there's a few different ways. We can use this for patch selection. So uh, you can either sort of like uh, go through different banks of, of patches mm -hmm. and jump through them this way, or you can just push your uh, button on here and uh, select them this way. Let me find one for us to use. So yeah, each of the patterns, yeah, e each, uh, you can record up to like a 64 step sequencer on it. So if you want to record in uh, your own sequences, either step recorded or either, uh, or play it in live. But actually, another cool thing that we have is we have a random pattern generator as well. So if I hold shift and go into record to access the random pattern, um, you can choose a key. So let's choose, say, uh, A minor. Well, A. Mm -hmm. And then you choose the scale. So Ionian, Dorian, Lydian, whatever you like, really. Mm -hmm. um, and then we can choose what type of, uh, whether we just want to play chords or individual notes or mixes. And um, Let's go for, if I put the busyness at 100%, it means we'll have something on each note. And then uh, I go down to generate, and then it should give us a, a random pattern. If I hit generate again, it'll give something different. We can play over the top of that, so. Yeah, which is cool. So it's really good for just like a, a, a inspirational tones, but if you want to change, as I say, things like the busyness, if I bring that down uh -huh. to sort of 70% 70, uh, 70 doesn't have to be 16 steps, so we could just do eight, and uh, I can uh, flip it over a couple of octaves. Let's change to say just chords. Let's hit generate, see what we get now. This is a break of thing because we've only gone for eight steps, but if I wanted to, then I could, um, I could also go in to uh, change the number of steps for the pattern as well, bring that down to sort of eight, so we've got like a shorter pattern going around. Change to, uh, say, random playback or something. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Why, can, you, can you just promise to put that in everything? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's, that's so far. I can't believe how much there is in this, mm. given, uh, yeah, because you said it before it came out to mm. me, and we just rushed to do a video on it. And then in the week uh, after that's come out, I feel that, or oh, maybe, you know, I, for all the people that watch the videos, we get you only see the the comments that people leave you know not everyone leaves a comment but it seemed like people um i think that's what's worked against it is the first guy people are just forgetting that it's now 2023 right yeah yeah uh, well not even that it's a completely it's so much more depth oh yeah you, yeah like this is not a beginner. The guy was the ultimate beginner plastic synth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I can say it was just yeah, a yeah. plastic, affordable, 
le- learning device. Mm. But then even this, on an educational point of view, with the inclusion of the wavetables, signal routing, even learning the modes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In that round, you know, like what's Ionian? Yeah, exactly. The scope of what it can do is is really vast, actually. If you're, I mean, as you say, the thing is, it's I would say it's totally accessible to beginners because it is nice and easy to use. Like I say, uh, all of the controls are really just grab, see what they do. Mm-hmm. If, um, you can find other things in the menu, or actually, if you just want to see something in particular, if you want to see the information about your filter, if you just hold menu and grab the filter, it will jump to to that menu. Brilliant. And like I say, assigning LFOs, just hold assign, grab the control that you wanted to do it. You know. Yeah, this is wild. To uh, I'm putting my Nick Bat hat on. Mm. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Asking the tough questions. <laughs> uh, what goes out over USB? It, can we do audio over yeah, USB? Yeah, yeah. So uh, it's uh, class compliant audio over USB as well. So you don't need to install the driver. Just send straight out to your computer. It's USB C as well. And um, yeah, which is uh, which is pretty ace. Uh, yeah, not m- not many of those. It's starting to come in. I'm glad yeah, to see yeah, it come yeah. in. But that's another. Re- uh, and so I just wanted to say about the model button here. Yes. So SH101 is in there originally. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. When you buy it, yep. is there going to be a cloud type yes. of integration? Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, it comes uh, comes with uh, the SH101 built into it. So as soon as you hit model on here, it goes over and uh, comes with loads of sort of cool preset sounds. Um, there's one that I really like. This one called La Base. <laughs> which is nice uh, and uh, all of the controls are kind of uh, then they sort of remap a little bit um, actually there's to help you sort of find them when you're navigating because obviously it's a different layout when you go into the menu if you go into the corner here and hit view it shows you where the controls are positioned in relation to where they would be for the SH-101 so like, the SH-101 only had one one envelope. Love that. So it just means that we're using this one over here. You can see as I grab a control, mm-hmm. it's adjusting on the screen on here. Um, Very so, thoughtful. Yeah, which is nice. Um, in terms of other ones available, yeah. So if you you can get, uh, there are three mo- three additional models available on cloud that you can just buy and load in, which are the um, uh, Jupiter Eight, Juno One Hundred and Six, and uh, JX Eight P. So you can just go onto Roland Cloud, you can buy those. Um, in fact, actually, I think you can buy them from the Anderson store as well yeah. and just uh, just load them in. Um, if you are a cloud subscriber, uh, we make a product which I've put in the back on here, which is the WC1 wireless adapter. You can uh, use the Cloud Connect app and your Roland Cloud subscription just to load in expansions, swap them out as you feel, uh, get additional sound packs and everything like that as well. So some couple of nice little options there. Come on, Hmm. I get it now. Yeah, yeah. Thanks so much, guys, for watching. Be sure to click on the links below. All the information will be there. And uh, I always forget to say, if if you like what we're doing, consider subscribing. If you don't, let us know. We learn from that hate. And thanks so much for being here, Andy. Thank you. Oz, see you soon.